Hi, it's Mark Marmer from Signature Electric. So we're continuing our series on electric vehicle charging in condominiums. We're here or sort of in North Toronto up by the 401 and Young Street. Uh, this is a unique, uh, everything's a bit unique, but it's a bit different. We've looked at mostly towers where uh, you have a relatively small footprint. When we get into these lower rise buildings, in this particular case, we have three buildings sharing a garage. The, the space in the garage tends to be very spread out. To try to put individual charging in can be very challenging because the distances in the garage are very far. So we may end up needing three or four panels to try to do that, and that adds to, to the cost. This building's come up with a very unique and interesting way to get around that, a kind of a, a hybrid of, of uh, individual and uh, community charging. They were looking for quite a while for some ideas. They called me in. I was able to give them something they were happy with, and uh, we moved ahead fairly quickly, and it's been well adopted. So I don't want to say too much out here, A, because I'm a little bit cold, and B, because it'll leave something for me to talk about when I get downstairs. Okay, so I wanted to bring you down here to show you an interesting opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned, this the garage is pretty spread out, and they've been looking, I believe they had a committee looking for a couple of years, figuring out how they were going to manage the charging down here. And they brought me down to this little spot and they said, well, we have these spaces right around here. These are rental spaces. And I said, oh, okay, what's happening with these rental spaces? Well, you know, some people rent them and... I saw cars charging other places. I said, this feels like it could be maybe uh, a whole little zone for for uh, EV charging. Uh, I said, Where, where's the electrical room? So he says, oh, it's just around the corner. So we can go there in a few minutes and take a look. So what happened was, I, my suggestion was, let's bring a panel. We only needed a 100 amp panel because we don't have that many chargers here. So that kept the cost down. The panel distance wasn't that far. We put the panel right in this perfect spot here, nice and protected. I didn't even have to do any extra protection for it because it's protected by this column out in front and put this panel and in this case we're using now one of the previous videos you would have seen the larger charge point unit with the dual chargers this is a different this is the charge point system more similar to our signature electric chargers with tap card authentication more for use for uh, individuals so these individuals are renting these spaces and they're using their tap card authentication to make these units work uh, these units have the same type of thing. They've got uh, a billing system, the charge point billing system. They are uh, able to uh, communicate with each other. They have power sharing. We talked a lot of times about power sharing. So having uh, as many chargers as possible on this 100 amp panel to keep the cost down. The charge point units, and I, I mentioned this in the other video, they require a uh, cellular signal. Now, the, when we looked at the bigger unit, it was pretty much above ground. Now we're down one level down. We don't really have very good cellular signal sort of in general down here. So the when I brought this up, they said, no, it's no problem. We were thinking about putting cellular signal anyways throughout the whole garage as a convenience to everybody. So it worked out just fine. So they went ahead and did this as sort of part of the project. We have some of the, the cellular receivers here. So what happens is in terms of functionality, this unit, this box, this gray box, which is part of the charge point system, talks to the signal from the GSM, from their cellular signal, and then it communicates wirelessly to these units. So that one box will do up to nine chargers uh, within 100 feet uh, line of sight. So if we get a, a more spread out, we just put more boxes in and we're able to do that. There's no cost for these boxes. They, they come as part of the system. So you can see that the unit is compact, very similar to what we had uh, before. Uh, with our, uh, our signature electric chargers and uh, now the only thing here is you have to keep in mind that these are not uh, OCPP chargers they don't have uh, an open standard protocol they are to be used with the charge point system so charge point has um, a feeling that if something says charge point on it it should be part of the charge point system and they've been around for a long time charge point has been in the market uh, doing charging from almost before there were electric vehicles, period. So they have a good reputation, and it, it's, a, it's a good solid system. For this condo, they were quite happy with this arrangement, and it worked out fine. Uh, here we have a situation where the we have a Tesla charging. I presume this is his space. So the charger itself is just a J1772 connection. 
and in some of the other videos I've told you that in order to use this in the Tesla like the one that's behind me here um, we use an adapter the adapter comes with the car so that means which is a question I get all the time can the charger be used with every car the answer is yes it can this serves most cars except the Tesla the Tesla's got an adapter so and it's 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 nice and neat the cord is managed well around here if somebody takes the care to hang it up when it's your car you're you're careful with it so this this person wouldn't even have to unwrap any of this cord he'll simply undo this park the way he is and it's it's perfect maybe we should just take a peek and we'll see where kind of where that electrical room was it's just down here sometimes that run from the electrical room to the panel that's something that adds cost uh, you know we're doing what we can to try to keep the cost down in this case we were able to pick it up on the low voltage side and we didn't need a uh, transformer either so that's a handy thing so, okay let's go take a peek at this electrical room Okay, so I promised you a little peek as to where the panel's fed from. So I brought you here just so you can get a feel. Here is where the parking is, and the electrical is just here. So we'll take a look. It's just down a little bit. This is probably not more than 100 feet away, and they had this small sub-electrical room. Since we only needed about um, 100 amps for that panel, we were able to put a new switch in and feed from here to to feed that panel. So all of this worked out to make the whole situation very economical. As I say, they'd been looking for quite a while to come up with a solution and they were quite happy with this. I, I got an answer within a couple of days after we'd done this and we moved ahead. The first two chargers went in with the uh, installation of the panel and the last couple were within about six or eight months after that. So, uh, you know, I'm very pleased the way this worked out. Think about this as an amenity. Think about this, what, what happened with the first two chargers and the second two chargers? The first two went in because we had a couple of people in the building that wanted it. But now people drive by and they say, oh, look, I have chargers available. So now that makes it easier for me. I, I know what the policy is in the building. I know what the building's decided. They have a fixed cost for what these are to be installed. And I understand the cost. So if I understand what it is, I understand what the cost is. I don't have to go through a whole discussion of educating the board and asking permission. I just have to decide that this works for me or it doesn't work for me. And so then what happens is that's why we see the set next couple come very quickly after that. We have buildings, what we've done downtown, where as we're installing the panel, people are signing up. And people also sometimes think that maybe with these rental spaces, as an example, that there may be a limited number of them and they want to be, even though I don't maybe have an electric car now, I'm willing to pay for that to have it up front, to have it as a, as an add-on, right? Because it, it's, it'll be tied to their suite, it'll add value to their suite, and, and it leaves the possibility they, in their mind they are ready to buy an electric car, maybe not right at this exact moment, but now that they've got it, the spot's in, the charger's in, now they're comfortable. Now they know they can go out and see what kind of cars are available and know that when they come home, all they have to do is pull into their space and charge. So this is where we're going, right? We have 5% now in Canada of cars on the road that are electric. Not a ton, but 5% is not an insignificant amount. I don't know that we're still seeing 5% in the condos. I think partly because of the fact that it's still a little bit of a challenge to get the charging in. But when we have a solution and we have a smart solution, people are more are more willing and we were at the auto show this year and we saw that there's more cars available so we're on the right track again think about it not just for the individual owners and not just for the individual people who have cars but as an amenity that's adding value for everything in the condo and for people that even that owns own spaces but don't have cars Hopefully you found this to be an interesting application with these rental spaces and uh, individual chargers with tap card authentication. So if you're in the Toronto area and you think something like this might work for you, give us a call 416-490-8093. Check out our website for more information on chargers and all kinds of things electrical, signatureelectric.ca or even our YouTube channel. Take a look and uh, we'll alert you when uh, we do something new and interesting. Thanks very much.